This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with the Mark Webber. Dub them ease. It's good to, I feel like I have not said your name in quite mm-hmm. some time. Well, it, it's, I think been, it's been it's two only podcasts. Been, well, it's really only been one podcast, but the draft, we had extra stuff. Well, yeah, one week. Like, Sean and I were on yeah. last week, but we had the extra draft one, so that added another one. And I haven't I haven't seen your wonderful face, man. Yeah. How is, how is Philly? Um, now that we can say that, because you're no longer there. It's a weird place. I, I mean, seriously, Philadelphia is a weird place. First of all... You can park in the middle of the street. You can park in the middle of the street, <laughs> but only in South Philly. Okay. If you're from Philadelphia right now, you can talk all about Jake. this. Literally, Jake, I'm looking at you. People, first of all, it's a weird city. It's not a grid Mm -hmm. like Chicago, New York, things like that. It just sprawls all over the place. Okay. They had a weird law before that was like you couldn't be taller than the Capitol building, so that kind of made some weird things happen. Plus, it's just an old city. Mm -hmm. Uh, So one time there was literally a seven-way intersection. A seven-way intersection? Yeah, it was like a four-way intersection and then random other things coming in at the corners. It was really, really weird. And then to top all this off in South Philly, you can just park your car in the the median. You can just do it. And just get out. You can. I mean, it's literally the median is just lined up with cars. Hmm. Uh, But I I would be too worried about somebody hitting my car. They don't care. And and I mean, Chicago has a weird one, too. Chicago has the – you put your – your you know your foldable chair yeah. to reserve your spot. Hell yeah! And people like, people are like oh that's his spot. Oh man, he put the chair there. But I went to Tony Luke's. Okay. So Tony Luke's is a very uh, well known uh, place cheese to steak. get your yeah your Philly cheesesteak. Cheese he beat Bobby Flay is what I've been told. Okay. Um, on beat Bobby Flay. Okay. Um, which I texted my wife about that because we watch <laughs> beat Bobby Flay quite often. Um, I thought you were gonna say oh because she loves Bobby Flay. We do. We like Bobby Flay. Okay. Um, but yeah. It was it was cool. I mean, I wasn't there for very long. I didn't really. I didn't go mm-hmm. up the rocky steps or anything like that. You didn't or, lick the Liberty Bell like I did Barney not. Stinson told you to. I did not. Um, fun fact about though, even though I didn't go, go there, mm-hmm. but the rocky um, statue. Yeah, the statue. People always think it's at the top. It's, it's at the not, bottom. It's at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once we learned that, it was like, oh, I'm not really that excited. Well, to I don't want to. I don't want to go because. You climb in the steps, then you get to see it. That's yeah, what I thought I, it was. If I don't have to climb the steps to go to it, Why I don't would really I care. Just, just give me this cheesesteak, you know, under the interstate. We got to get Mark there in his like his gray sweatpants and his gray like zip up jacket, mm-hmm. the little uh, the little beanie worn yeah. down to here. You're running up. We got to get a picture of that. You run yeah, up. I don't really want to do it. No, you don't. <laughs> I don't really want to do that much. But welcome into the onside kick. A long intro for the onside kick. A little housekeeping here before we get into every NFL thing we're going to talk about today is, number one, you want to help support the channel, go check out patreon.com backslash Podcast. I mentioned Jake. He's one of them. He supports us each and every month. Also, you can get your MVP t-shirts. This isn't one. This is a Radar Superstar shirt. But you can get an MVP t-shirt down below in the store link in the description. Mostvaluablepodcast.com is where you get everything for MVP each and every day. And last but not least, if you're on, on iTunes, on Apple Podcasts, go give the Onside Kick, Rick and Johnny Podcast, Primetime Podcast, Fast Break, all the MVP podcasts, Graphic Conversation, a five-star rating on iTunes. And Mark? We got a jam-packed show today. Yep. Talking NFL draft pretty much the whole way through. We're going to talk winners and losers like we did last year. We're going to look at Darius Geis. Did the Redskins get a steal when they got Geis later in the draft? And then we're going to look at the rookie quarterbacks. I know Dave, Sean, and myself looked at them the night of the first round, but you weren't there. We got to talk about which one of these rookie quarterbacks will be starting day one for their individual teams Let's start, though, with winners and losers. I'll let you go yep. first. Let's start on a high note. Give us your first winner right, first of the winner. draft. Um, so this one's a strange one where I'm going to call them a winner, even though mm-hmm. long-term-wise, I don't know how it's going to play out. But okay. my first winner is the New York Giants. Ooh, okay. And the reason for that is, even though I do think I would have probably went and gotten Sam Darnold, Mm -hmm. even though in my mock draft I had them doing exactly what they did. They took Saquon Barkley. Uh, I I was thinking long term, but they're sitting there saying, no, we can still win now. And really having Saquon Barkley 
And I know people on Twitter were a little angry about it, too, because they're saying really a number two overall on a running back. But mm-hmm. they're a competitor now. I mean, without a doubt, this uh, is assuming w- that their wide receivers are healthy. That's the one thing I don't understand with people who are like, why did the Giants take Saquon number two? To win a Super we, Bowl today. Well, we have bitched about this team mm-hmm. not taking a running back. How many years? Oh, they don't have a run game. Didn't get a good enough running back. Ah, they don't have a run game. Didn't get a good enough running back. Now they do, and you're telling them, "Ah, I wouldn't have done that. And people get really kind of worked up about Jordan Howard, Mm -hmm. about um, from Kansas City, whose name I'm blanking, even though he was my running back in fantasy football. You're talking about um, not Charkandrick West. Right, we're blanking on I'm the name right now. I'm blanking on it. I have I'm not his worried face about it. in my head. You look it up, but like you were at Alvin Toledo Kamara. Hunt. Kareem Hunt. Yeah, Kareem Hunt. I should have known that because he was my guy oh my in fantasy. God, Toledo. Uh, I even I drafted him at like the very very end, and I was like, yeah, why not? You know, Alvin Kamara, who mm-hmm. was he a fifth or sixth rounder? He was towards the very end of the draft. We're very worked up on the, but you can get a good running back later. But how many running backs are drafted every year and are nothing? Mm-hmm. You're more likely to get a guy in well, the third, fourth, fifth here, round that's bad as opposed to thing, getting a good one. Here's the thing I think about with the Giants. It's like, yeah, I can go and I can get a Kareem Hunt. I can get an Alvin Kamara. Mm-hmm. Or I can spend a top five pick and get a Leonard Fournette. Yeah. Like, that, Saquon's not going to be the same type of runner. That's not what I'm saying. But he could be the same thing to this Giants team yeah. impactful-wise And I, that I actually Leonard Fournette was. Leonard Fournette's great. And you know Ezekiel Elliott. That's the better one. one because Leonard Fournette's fantastic. Well, he was but last they've got year. the defense. Yeah. You know, uh well, so the Giants apparently they spent big bucks on it last year. They did. It just didn't have any offensive help last year. It sure did not. But like you look at a guy like Zeke and it's really mm-hmm. a uh one man and Dak Prescott was a new hot thing too. Yeah. But one man came in and all of a sudden this team was great. They also had a great offensive line though. Great and young. Yes. Uh you know, New York offensive line, maybe not so good. Mm-hmm. But they added some stuff with uh, Will, Harn- uh, Will Hernandez getting through the draft. Um, you also had Nate Solder. So you have some options here to kind of fix the offensive line a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I honestly think that adding Saquon Barkley is a great win now type of move. Who knows five years down the line? I'm not that worried about it. But if you're saying well, you can win a Super Bowl in the next three years, that's a winning Draft right there. Before I give my first winner, the last thing I'll say about the Giants is the thing I don't hate about them going Barkley over Darnold Mm -hmm. is which quarterback they got later. Because they got Kyle Luletta, like, yeah, he's a project, but if you're going to commit to Eli, and let's say Eli's there two, three years, that'll give Luletta Mm -hmm. enough time to where, let's be honest, He may be like Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying the same way of like where Rodgers was, oh, he should have been number one in that draft class but went all the way to 20. This kid's a project, but working with Schumer, he can really get that potential out of him while Eli Manning is winning games early on. You have a really good and intelligent quarterback Mm -hmm. with a great connection to Peyton Manning. You can't ignore that Mm -hmm. part um, just for mentorship material. And you have a guy who is known as a quarterback guru yeah. uh, in your coach, Schumer. So, uh, Schumer. Schumer. Uh, Schumer. Did I say Schumer? I meant Schumer. No, I said Schumer. Or, well, I said Schumer and yeah. said Schumer at first. Not Amy. Uh, that's exactly Not what talking to Amy. my head um, for her new movie coming out. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you have a lot of good options to, to develop in the future. But I'll let you take a team because I don't want to talk about the Giants forever. Cleveland Browns. Absolutely won this draft to me. And the reason why isn't just because of the Baker Mayfield I mean, when you got a lot of picks, I hope you do. The the thing with them is they got a lot of picks, but for me, they got guys that I absolutely love. Like, I can go down and go, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six. Their first seven picks, which, Mm -hmm. yeah, they had nine. So the majority of their picks, I really like. Like, Baker Mayfield... He was, to me, although I, was, I wasn't I was as ballsy as some, and I had Josh Allen as my first quarterback off the board, Baker Mayfield was the one I liked them. Him and Lamar Jackson were the two that I liked the most, personally. Hmm. Then you get Denzel Ward, a guy who, when we did our live mock draft, when I was the Browns, I traded up just to get this kid. 
Like, yep. That's what I did. Because he fell a little bit. Yeah, but he's that good of a corner. They also need a corner to match with their secondary in Cleveland. Well, I mean, then you you essentially draft your starting. I mean, he's exactly. your number one quarter exactly cornerback right and now. And you get your hopefully franchise guy in Baker Mayfield, a guy mm-hmm. who I think is his personality is going to fit in great with that Cleveland kind of town and that Cleveland be the mentality. Savior. Austin Corbett. Love him on the offensive line. Nick Chubb, although Darius Geis was still available. This was an interesting one to me. However, I like it. There's another team I'm going to bring up for my losers that drafted a running back I don't like, and they passed Mm -hmm. on Geis as well. Although you passed on some running backs to take Nick Chubb, I like that pick for the Cleveland Browns because you bring in Carlos Hyde. You don't need a back to be the bell bell cow. You can have kind of Carlos Hyde be like the Sony Michelle type back. Nick Chubb, just do what you did in Georgia. Pound up the middle. Get us those yards. And I like Nick Chubb. And then it's like the next three. I like Chad Johnson on the defensive line. He was going to be a later round pick that I think was going to be a nice pickup for any team that got him. I like Avery, the linebacker from Memphis. The one I really do like is another offensive one. This was a guy that I... Looked at as a sleeper of mine. I know he tested positive for marijuana at the combine. Where part of me is like, come on, you knew you were getting te- like. It's not that you did it. It's that you knew you were being tested it's that you were and dumb you still enough did to get, exactly yeah, to go through and get you, you, the positive. You test. were dumb enough to get popped basically mm-hmm. for it. However, Josh Gordon there can probably mentor this kid on that. I love the skills that Antonio Callaway has. So you just add that. Say to, that Josh Gordon is going to mentor. Hey him man, he's silly. he's turned he's turned his career around, man. He's coming back. But you add him to this wide receiver core. Mm-hmm. The first seven picks in this draft for Cleveland could be really solid picks for them sure. this year and going forward. Yeah, it's interesting with Cleveland because they they did a lot because they had the option mm-hmm. to do a lot. I mean. But the the thing that I and I know it's it's a new day in Cleveland. You mm-hmm. know the the uniforms aren't as they're not brighter again, but they're still <laughs> still bright. Uh, and they're Joe Thomasless, which is sad. That is something. Uh, but for the thing for the Cleveland Browns, for me, the worry is always the fact of they're always at the top. Mm-hmm. This isn't the first time they've had a lot of picks. Let's see how it goes. And the thing that scares me, draft wise, yes, winners. But the thing that scares me still is Hugh Jackson is a bad head coach. Mm-hmm. He is one win, one single win. That's all he has in two years. Baker Mayfield going one to get him 31. 16. He's going to give him 16 in a year. Baker yeah, we'll Mayfield, see. 16 and 0, baby. I, you know, he Super was a guy Bowl, who Super people really Mayfield. expected to be able to make that offense happen, and nope. So it worries me with Baker Mayfield a little bit because he's a, I really like Baker Mayfield, but I don't like him... Right now, necessarily. Mm-hmm. I'm going to like him, I think... Down the line. Yeah, a little bit further. Um, and Cleveland likes to draft quarterbacks constantly, so we'll see what happens. Before we get into losers, do you have any... Do you have another winner? Um, another winner... Uh, I'm not going to talk about them, but just shout out to the Chicago mm-hmm. Bears for what they did to basically... Go check out the Outcast. Yeah, check out the Outcast for that, because they talked about Roquan Smith and how... Gr- even though he's probably... I, I still say... I wanted Tremaine Edmonds because I think he has a higher ceiling. Mm-hmm. Uh, but having just a really competent leader on the defense, um, you know, that's a, that's a really great pick. They had a lot. They addressed a lot. Listen to the outcast. They'll talk about it. Um, the, the other one I want to talk about, just because of one thing that they did, is I don't want to call them a complete winner. Mm-hmm. They just got a steal is the Arizona Cardinals. Because of Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen. Because overall, a, their draft to me is not as yeah, impressive. It's, it's, it's not just a, Josh Rosen. Exactly. They weren't winners in the draft, but they got their quarterback, who honestly is the most NFL ready quarterback day one, mm-hmm. which is funny because he's the only one that has a real starter in front of him in uh-huh. Sam Bradford. Uh, but we'll talk about that later in the podcast. But yeah, I just like the fact that they got him at uh, kind of a steal. The last team, and I'm kind of in my head, kind of pitching around two teams that I think I could give my last win or two. Ah, fuck it. I'm going to mention both of them. The first one I'm going to mention is my Minnesota Vikings. They're a team that I thought had a really nice... They had, like, I thought that looking at this, that they had a draft that you would even like. 
Because they picked up guys like I actually Brian usually O'Neal. like what they do. They picked up Brian O'Neill, yep. who you had in I your love first Brian round because yep. you love him. Um, they picked up Mike Hughes, the cornerback that you also really like. Jalen Holmes, a pass rusher on the defensive line, a DE that I really like. And then later in the sixth round, they got a Kobe Cassette, who's he's a guy I actually, where I thought he would go earlier than six. Yeah, I actually always like what the Vikings do in the draft. They mm-hmm. do a really, really good draft, uh, really good job scouting and drafting. I mean, there's a reason why they have some of the, I think they have like the most or second most pro bowlers um, in the last, what, five, six, seven years mm-hmm. or something like that, that they've drafted. Um, they've done a really good job with that. They're always good. That's a reason why they have such a solid young team. But the true team I'm going to use is my last winner, and it pains me to say this, Mark, mm-hmm. because I hate their guts. Are you going to say the Packers? The Packers. Yeah. Like, I mean, come on. You get Jair Alexander, who mm-hmm. top three corner in this draft. You get Josh Jackson in the second. To me, could be you could argue that that could be the ste- – like, yes, that Rosen – but yes, Josh Jackson in the second could be the steal of but the draft. But here's the problem with that, though. Does he fit the Packers? They just need guys to take away the ball at this point. But but here's the problem. He is a zone corner. Mm-hmm. The Packers are not a zone team. Bring in, we don't know exactly what they're going to do defensively. They're bringing in Mike Pettin this That's year true. for defense. That's true. It is different defensively. We don't know what Mike Pettin's going to want to do with that. I love those first two picks. I love Odin Burks. The outside linebacker out of Vanderbilt. They get Equiminius St. Brown. Like, hey, we're not going to get a wide receiver early on. We'll just get Equiminius St. Brown, the tall guy who I thought was going to go to the Bears, the tall guy who can run really fast. We're Aaron Rodgers just going to have to throw it up. Yeah. That is going to be a match made in heaven. I mean, the thing, that the, made in heaven. the thing that the Packers did, which is fantastic for them, uh, is, you know, they're scared of Trubisky. Uh huh. And they went and got two corners. <laughs> That's all it is. No, but really, the reality is Kirk Cousins is mm-hmm. what they just did. Unfortunately, they, I hate to say it, but they just saw Kirk Cousins show up and they go, "We're gonna get cornerbacks." Yeah. Well, they got two corners plus I mentioned St. Brown. They also got Jamon Moore out of Missouri. These are two tall wide receivers, and mm-hmm. that's the thing. Those are the wide receivers They're I love. They're expecting shootouts. Guys that, hey, Aaron Rodgers, just throw it up into the end zone. Let these guys go and get it. But now we kind of move into the sadder news. Yep. Who's your first loser? So my first loser that I have to come straight up and say is the New Orleans Saints. Ooh, we did not say that. I thought you were going to take my team. I did. No, I hope not. Uh, <laughs> I actually have another team that I thought about saying first, but I was like, they're All a little right. bit more obvious, so I'm going to go with this one. The New the New Orleans Saints, for me, what I see wrong is— You didn't like how they traded up for no. Davenport? No. What the hell were you thinking to trade up? Be, it's not that you traded up for Marcus Davenport, because I like Marcus Davenport, but you traded a lot for Marcus Davenport. Teams traded less for arguably more mm-hmm. than you just did. For Marcus Davenport. If you're going to talk about getting fleeced because that's the, <laughs> our favorite thing we love to do, this one to me, I mean, Marcus Davenport, what the Saints are saying is this guy right here wins us a Super Bowl next year. See, but I'll be completely honest. I did not mind the move. You I think did, they're going to win a Super Bowl next year? It's not that I think they're going to win a Super Bowl, but you got to think of this team. The thing with the Saints is – Arguably, you could say, yeah, you got to go play the next game that they did against the, what, Philadelphia Eagles would have been the next game. But they were one play away from playing another game for the Super Bowl. And they weren't going to— Although a better defense got absolutely trounced. And they weren't going to go with secondary help, although that was what lost them the game because their secondary doesn't know how to tackle Mm -hmm. right out to— but I'll, Stephon Diggs. Yeah, I mean, I'll give a little bit of credit that, sure, if the pass That's me rush being was a, a Viking little bit better. Fan, by the way, I know I'm rubbing your face in it a little bit. But, like, the pass rush is something that I could see them going out to get. It's just, did they give up too much for it? Because the rest of their draft, I'm not, re- I, I'm not really excited about mm. anyone else that they drafted well, behind Marcus Davenport. It, it's tough because the they don't have a million needs— Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's not a ton of things they needed to do, but I feel like for the Saints, there's been quite a bit of losing draft picks. 
um, mm-hmm. that I think is going to burn them later. Because, yes, they have a young defense, and, you know, they've kind of refreshed some pieces, uh, especially like, guy, you know, like you look at Ingram, you look at Kamara there. But I sit there and I see Drew Brees, and Drew Brees is still great. He is still doing very well, but you really expected them to draft uh, Rudolph. You really expect them to go and draft Mason Rudolph when they traded up, and they didn't. And what that re- – I mean, like, I'll say it again. What it really screams is that they truly believe that they have a missing piece, and apparently it's Marcus Davenport. All right. So my team, my first loser, and I mm-hmm. hope this is the team you were going to say, the Detroit Lions. Oh, it's not the team I was going to say. It's not? Nope. Maybe it's my second team. But the Detroit Lions to me, if you guys listen to the draft podcast that – Sean, Dave, and I did, I hated their first-round pick. I absolutely hated the Frank Ragnow pick, only because I saw it as a huge effing reach for them to go get Ragnow. But I mean, he climbed up in a lot of boards. He did climb up. However, to me, I was looking at a different position of need for them. Rashawn Evans was still on the board you needed a linebacker. Yeah. You could go ahead and get that linebacker. They needed that interior offensive line. I know they needed some defensive line help, which they still could have gotten in Tavian Bryant. Ah, Tavian Bryant might have been a reach there as well because I forgot Deron Payne went a little bit before that. But Ragnow, to me, was a pure reach for the Lions. Then the second pick that they made happened, where if you look at the running backs – that were uh, that were off the board at this point. Saquon Barkley, Rashad Penny, he went to the Seahawks. The Patriots pissed off Sean by going with Sony Michelle, where he liked Sony Michelle, but he really wanted him to go with um, Lamar Jackson. Then you got Cleveland going with Nick Chubb. Buccaneers go with Ronald Jones. Darius Geis is still on the board. And I know what people say. I know the news. Oh, he fell because teams felt like they couldn't trust him. There was all this negative stuff coming out about him. I would have taken Darius Geis over uh, over Kerryon Johnson. I like Kerryon Johnson. I like Darius Geis a lot more. To me, the first two picks in the draft, the Lions, like... I know what people are going to say. It's a Matt Patricia draft, Mm -hmm. like a center. It's not sexy, but for me, total reach. Well, you You know what a lot of that later on. A lot of people are saying about the Ragnow pick. What? Bill Belichick liked him. Bill Belichick really liked him. He liked him. So Patricia Patricia liked liked him. I just, to me, and the Lions can prove me wrong. Yes, they got two needs off the bat. Off Mm -hmm. the bat. But I thought Ragnow was a reach. I thought they got the wrong running back in Kerryon Johnson, where Darius Geist to me is the better back, and you go ahead and take Johnson. I just didn't like the Lions and what they did. Yeah. Even after that, it's like the only pick that they made that I liked was their need of defensive line and them going with Deshaun Hand. That's it. That's the only mm-hmm. pick I liked from them. Who's another loser for so, you? So the, the other loser I want to talk about, and, and I don't want to... <sighs> I feel like I might just be becoming what division a hater. Are they, in? Uh, they would be in the AFC West. Okay, not the same team I'm thinking about. No, so I feel like I'm just maybe be starting to become a hater of these guys. Is it the Raiders? It is the Raiders, and I don't like it because I like Sean Derek Carr. Hated the Raiders' first pick of Colt Miller. It, I don't. Here's the okay, because I like Colt Miller. He's fine. Uh, over they reached without a doubt to <laughs> grab him, but he's fine. Um, mm-hmm. Here's the thing for the Raiders. They got friend of the show, Mo Hurst, too. They did. Mo Hurst is actually the only thing I think I like Dude, about what they fell. did. he fell. He fell The hard. heart condition thing, but he I got know. cleared. But he, we but we all had him in our first round. Yeah, and he was, that's the thing that shocked what, me because he, he is cleared by doctors. I'm glad he did. Yeah. Like I said, friend of the show, Mo Hurst. So that's their good pick that they got. But here's the problem for the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Their offensive line is good. <laughs> so why did they draft back-to-back offensive linemen? But the thing that was the huge thing that is... That now Tom Cable gets to go and ruin. No, no, no. It won't, <laughs> maybe. But the whole thing with their offensive line is that they needed... Donald Penn was the big linchpin in this. Where, first off, he's old as shit. He's 35 years old. So they didn't know how many more years he was going to have. Mm-hmm. Then there's news today 
that he could get accused or uh, basically the headline had Donald Penn and domestic violence in the yeah. same sentence, which to me, I saw, oh, that's probably why they went with a Brandon Parker and a Colton Miller so early mm-hmm. because John Gruden, he's not a dumb guy. He probably figured this out and was like, before people come out and find this out, I'm finding his replacement. I'm going to get his replacement so that we can have that right now. Would some people say it's a reach? Maybe a little bit to it reach is. for it is. Colton Miller. But like with the Lions, mm-hmm. I think that the Colton Miller reach was less of a reach than Frank Ragnow in the first. I I don't know about that because even though f- I don't know, I, I think they're both reaches really. I was gonna I was gonna say that either one could would have or that Ragnow sure he would have been available in the second, but I really think that uh-huh. Colton Miller probably would have been available in the second as well. I don't think for so. me with the with the Raiders, it comes down to this. You had other things you could have done. You were available. You mm-hmm. traded back from 10 to 15. And then what do you do with one of those picks that you get? You trade it for Martavius Bryant, who is not an upgrade that, over Crabtree. That's a John, or, or a Jordy Nelson. That's a John thing. Gruden thing, though. A John Gruden thing. Love mm-hmm. it or love it or hate it. John Gruden will take veterans over rookies. Yes, he but wants to fill that locker room he, no, with okay. veteran players. I'm glad you're saying filling the locker room. Yeah, because he's now filling the locker room. He got rid of Crabtree because re- of character is issues. Is it a good veteran? And Probably what did he not. do? Got Martavius Bryant, who has character issues. And who did he draft? Arden Key, who I like, but has character issues. Now, but you're Arden filling Key's your character- locker room with bad, uh, the bad thing mojo. Is, here. Arden Key is the interesting one to me because I like him as a player. He's the one that I. I did it when Brandon was away from the primetime podcast for a Mm -hmm. week at the wee beginning of the college football season. I had a topic where could Arden Key be not the number one overall pick, but the best defensive prospect in this draft. That's the kind of hype he came into this season with. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't have the off the field stuff. It's not quite like Baker. It's not domestic violence. So to me, I was always like, I don't really know where to put Mm -hmm. his off-the-field issues because it was basically, I don't know if I'm coming back to LSU. That's basically what the -the off-the-field issue was with him. So I don't hate that pick. I like the Mo Hurst pick. The Colton Miller, Brandon Parker thing, I'm looking at that as John Gruden knew what was going on with Donald Penn and wanted to stay ahead of the curve on that one. It's possible. But is it I, a good draft? No. Is it a terrible a draft? Job. I don't think so. But the last team that I'll bring up as a loser, and this one's probably going to surprise you, Mark. It's probably going to surprise some of the people at home. I like two of the picks that this team made. However, overall, I'm not quite sure what I think of their draft overall. Mm-hmm. And that's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, okay. I'm going to be completely honest. Most of this loser weight mm-hmm. goes on their number, their number one pick, their first round pick. Going in another reach for me, reaching and taking Terrell Edmonds yeah. in the first round. When if you were going to go safety, you could have went with Justin Reed. Mm-hmm. You could have went with Anthony um, Averett from Alabama. Bates from Jesse Bates from Vanderbilt. There were guys way ahead of Terrell Edmonds on many people's boards. And I get that some people will say, if you like a guy, take a guy. Yeah. But in the first round, taking Little Edmonds, which is weird to say Little Edmonds because Tremaine Edmonds is the youngest play, youngest mm-hmm. pass rusher in this draft. I just I didn't I didn't like the pick for the Steelers. However, their next two picks, I love. Mason Rudolph, I think yeah. that was a great pick. Getting James Washington, the pick before, pairing them up, I really like. Marcus Allen could be a good pick. You know, um, Okafor from Western Michigan could be a good player on the defensive, on the offensive line. Yeah. But I just feel like for me, and that's why I saved this team to last, because really if I had to pick, the Lions are my true loser mm-hmm. of this draft. I just I don't know why the Steelers went and reached for Terrell Edmonds. Yeah, it's a it's a weird one, and when it happened, I was very surprised. Um, and this is I okay I debated in my head if I'm gonna if I should say this, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Go ahead. Um, I really think this 
would have gotten a lot more hate and a lot more heat when it happened mm-hmm. if it wasn't a pick announced by Ryan Shazier. You're talking about the first pick. Yeah, the 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 this the uh, Terrell Edmonds pick. Edmonds pick. Um and cuz Ryan Shazier being able to walk down that stage is incredible. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt, even though it did look like he was in a little bit of pain, still, oh, I'm sure he was in walk. a ton of pain. I'm sure the next day he had to just sit and relax and do nothing mm-hmm. uh, because he was nearly paralyzed. Um, now, two things. One, because when this happened, I was shocked that nobody on Twitter was upset about mm-hmm. this. And I'm like, where's all the backlash? Because this is a bad pick. Because Ryan Chazier made the because pick. Because everyone was talking about that. Flip side, just want to throw this out there. Mm-hmm. It is an incredible job. If there's anybody who works in PR right now who is watching this, you know what I'm talking about. Or wants to it go is, into PR. Yeah, it is an incredible job by the NFL, the way they have turned the Ryan Shazier story into this great comeback story mm-hmm. instead of a— Which I hope he never plays football again, not because— Because his body is worth more than that. Well, not because I don't want mm-hmm. him to be happy, because I want him to be alive. Yeah, <laughs> but here's the thing. They did such an incredible spin on this. Instead of a, I'm never oh, letting man, my got, children play football. Look at look at him. Look at the resilience that right? came back from this. Like when everybody's talking about that and nobody, when he comes out there and makes mm-hmm. this pick, nobody on the radio, nobody on Twitter, nobody on well, ESPN or NFL Network for sure. It was just, oh my God, he's walking. Yeah, nobody was like, then that's why I'm not letting my children play football. Mm-hmm. Um, there were probably some. I'm sure there were. Some but. at home going, nope, 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 little Johnny I, ain't playing And, and no I'm not football. trying to criticize Shazir, obviously, the devil. because, I mean, he's uh, – and what he's done is incredible. But it's just the kind of thing where you sit there, and when the NFL talks about player safety and they mm-hmm. change the rule where you can't now lead with your helmet, they're trying to change the kickoff into a, basically a punt. Well, they're just trying to get rid of it, period. Uh, yeah, that's the goal at at, mm-hmm. at some point further down the line. But you sit there and you're like, here's something right here that was terrifying to see on the field. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not being used against them. Which I'll tell you, mm-hmm. I know this is off the topic of Ryan Chazier. The one football league where Dan Patrick had the guy on mm-hmm. um, to talk about like rules and stuff, I love how he said they were going to do kickoffs for that football Was that league. the uh, the alliance? Yes. Yeah. Where basically it's going to be, hey, you automatically get the ball at your own 20 or 25. Mm-hmm. And if you want to do an onside kick, it's all right, you get the ball at that yard line, fourth and 10. You have to convert. If you yeah. don't convert, the other team gets it. I got a lot of opinions about the uh, the kickoff being changed, mm-hmm. but uh, it's not. I mean, do I want to see change. it go? No, because it takes away mm-hmm. jobs from players. too. It does, and and also Jeff Saturday made a really awesome point. Guys about who it. are trying to fight on that team yep. as a special teamer. You to... need this is your way. This is your foot in the door to mm-hmm. be a special teamer. Um, at this point, though, with the way they're doing it, they're essentially making it very are trying to make it more similar to a punt. Yeah, they're just trying to eat away at it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like people like to say with government, uh, taxes go up, they don't go down, yeah. or, or things like that. Or, you know, like when tolls go up, mm-hmm. they put tolls up, they don't take tolls down. Mm-hmm. You take more and more and more. So essentially that's what the NFL is trying to do of saying, we're going to take away more and more of this kickoff thing. At this point, just take the thing away. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Just let us start. And I'm a big Devin Hester fan. Let us start at the 20-yard line because that's what they're going to do anyways. I so al- just make it happen. I also lied. There's one more team I'm going to bring up, mm-hmm. and I actually really like their draft. They only had four picks in this draft. Do you know who I'm going to bring up? Uh, Nope. Tennessee Titans. Oh, Titans did a good job. Yeah. Rashawn Evans. Mm-hmm. Love that pick. Yep. He faller. Harold Landry. Love him in the second. I was begging for. Yes. I was if you if you follow me at the Mark Weber on Twitter. You I was the Bears begging the Bears him. to trade up and get <laughs> him, uh, and they didn't. And then the que- the only questionable pick mm-hmm. that I have for the Titans, however I like it, is Luke Falk. Yeah, it's like yeah, you've got yeah. Marcus Mariota. You don't need a starting quarterback, but it's but like they hey, get hurt. if Marcus ever goes down again, he had mm-hmm. that. What was it? The knee that yeah. that kept him out. And he got injured week a, seventeen. It's a different kind of quarterback. Ago. Yeah, you know, so it's kind of not that mobile guy. Yeah, it's nice to kind of have something a little bit different for practices mm-hmm. and things like that. And I'm not saying the drafting him purely for practice. Yeah, uh, but it's nice to have something a little bit. Well, it's different. a solid backup, and I really and, like that one. Like I said, guys get hurt. Mm-hmm. Marcus Mariota has already gotten hurt. Jameis Winston, the guy who got drafted right mm-hmm. before him, also has gotten hurt. These, These mobile guys. Yep. 
You know I'm scared of them. I talk about it all the time. I I like to watch them play. <laughs> I am terrified to have one of them on my team. Well, this is where you guys are going to come in. Let us know your winners and your losers. I know we really talked mainly teams, but if there's also a player that you Joe think Flacco. is a winner. Well, oh, not, big not loser there. I'm talking about like a player mm. that got drafted. Like I would say Shaquem Griffin would be a winner in this one to where he goes to a situation where he gets to play with his brother. Yeah. It's a team that really liked him. That was one that I'm glad glad he went to the Seahawks because before the C.J. Anderson cut, I originally had him mocked in the fifth round mm-hmm. to the Seahawks, had him raised because of that C.J. Anderson cut and that moved around my seven-round mock draft. Didn't matter, though, because I was wrong about most of them. But let us know what you guys think, your winners or losers, from the NFL draft down below in the comments section. Let's move on, though, into our next topic. And what we are looking at is the Washington Redskins – did they get the steal of the draft in Darius Geis? What do you think, Mark? Did they get the steal of the draft in LSU running back Darius Geis? I don't want to. I don't want to say it's the steal of the draft because but Josh Rosen's the steal of the draft. Potentially, I mean, as a franchise <laughs> quarterback, right there that uh, should have probably gone to the teams ahead of him. Mm-hmm. He did say nine mistakes. Um, I love that nine mistakes. I, hate, I, I, I hated was like, his comments after that. I was like. Are you gonna play inside linebacker? Are mm-hmm. you gonna play offensive guard? Like, yeah. what, what are you doing here? But anyway, did you did you expect the uh, the Denver Broncos to take? Did you expect the the Colts? That's where he wanted to go. Yeah, he wanted the Colts to take him so he can replace Andrew Luck. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I get it. He's <laughs> confident. Uh, or Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, but for for Geis, uh, I don't even know what I'm saying. For Geis here, for Juice, uh, for my man Juice, <laughs> Juice. Um, I, I don't necessarily know that I want to call it the steal of the draft, but it definitely is quite a steal mm-hmm. for them. Um, you know, it, it's interesting here because the Washington Redskins, you know, their backfield right now, it is a little crowded, but it's not like this huge mess of, I don't really know who is your running back, you know, or your running back by committee is a five-person job right now, and we got to see who gets cut in practice, mm-hmm. uh, or I, you know, in in the uh, mini camps. So, I think this is going to be great. Is he going to become Marshawn Lynch, which is what people are saying? I think he well, that's what he said even it. said. He wants to yeah. be the next beast mode. I don't know if I see him being necessarily beast mode, only because I don't think that the Washington Redskins are going to ask him to do that. Mm-hmm. They're going to, you know, he's got P. Ryan there. He's got Thompson there right now. You know, he's got guys he's going to split a little bit with. Rob Kelly. Rob Kelly as well. Um, what I think is going to be really useful for him is the guy who's going to be that quarterback there now. Alex Smith. If it was Kirk Cousins... I don't necessarily know that it's going to matter too much. You're mm-hmm. a running back in that case. But Alex Smith loves a running back he can throw the ball to. He is a dink and dunk kind of guy. Mm-hmm. That is the way the Redskins are moving. So Geis really fits this perfectly. you know. And it's something that is a surprise. I'm sure they were shocked that he was going to be available for them. Um, well, and I think if I'm not mistaken, they traded up to get him. Mm-hmm. It's not like oh he magically fell. They traded well, up a little bit. Well, he fell quite a bit. Yeah, but they, they got traded to a point up where they were him. like, at this point, it's dumb if we don't yeah. trade up for him. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a an idea here that this team, this one player, it doesn't change everything. It doesn't mm-hmm. magically make them into contenders for the Super Bowl or anything like that. But it really will round out this team, and it'll give them something they currently don't have. Does it alone make them a Super Bowl contender? No, it does not. However, the thing I am looking for from Darius Geis is this is a kid that, think about last year at LSU, when or not last year, two years ago, so Leonard Fournette's senior year or last year at LSU. Leonard Fournette gets injured. Darius Geis comes in and runs with almost the same ferocity and the same power as Leonard Fournette. That is what you are getting. You're not getting the exact same thing in Leonard Fournette, but you are getting that type of a player. A player that you can say, I am just going to run forward and barrel through that line. Now, is it going to be something where he's the only back? No, you've got Thompson who's probably like, the way I look at it is Geis is going to be the power back. You've got P. Ryan is going to be kind of the, I'm going to do more other things than just go right up the middle. 
Thompson's going to be your receiving back. Like, I had him in fantasy last year, and he was racking up points left and right for being a receiving I, back. I really think, though, that Geis is going to take some of that away. You think so? I do, because he is a difficult guy to tackle. Mm-hmm. He's quick, sure, but... You know, the reason why he gets some of these beast mode comparisons are I just not just the size and things like that, but the maybe fact it's that he I is just difficult to bring down. Maybe it's because I just don't see him as that typical, like, I'm going to put him out there and throw the ball to him. It's more times mm-hmm. than not, I'm going to hand the ball to him and let him run with a full head of steam right up the middle. Like, to me, I am shocked, absolutely shocked, that teams like... Really, the Lions are the biggest team I'm shocked with Mm -hmm. because not only did you get the chance to take him in the first round, where it's like, all right, if you didn't want to take him in the first round, I understand because I had him a second round talent. But then you don't take him with your 43rd. And he's exactly what the Lions running back is expected to be a big bruiser type of guy. Exactly. And he could pair nicely with a Mm -hmm. Amir Abdullah with the Detroit Lions, especially if you feel like Ragnow is the guy to help out because the whole thing that I even asked Brandon leading up into the draft about the Lions was is it a, it's a chicken and an egg chicken and the egg scenario which sucks more the running backs of the offensive line like for the Redskins not just because of Geis but because of really their first pick and their second pick so for the last two drafts I've been saying that the Redskins need to draft a nose tackle they need to draft a defensive tackle to play in the middle. They didn't do it last year. They didn't do it two years ago. This year, although I thought it'd be Vita Vea, they do get that nose tackle in Deron bringing the pain. I think because of that, because of Geis, because of the addition of Alex Smith, this could now be a team that it's like, all right, Jay Gruden, we are giving you more weapons on this team. Yeah. Show us that you can coach this team. Show us that you can compete. And don't be surprised if the Redskins make the playoffs this year. See, that's the tough thing for the Redskins because they are in such a difficult division. First mm-hmm. of all, they're just in a difficult conference with the NFC. And the Giants got better, too. Giants got better and probably have the better running back. Eagles are the Super Bowl champions. Yep, there's no reason why the Eagles are not going to win this mm-hmm. division next year. I'm sorry to the rest of the fans mm-hmm. out there. The Cowboys are the only ones where you're like, eh, who knows? Because, you know, losing Des Bryant, losing uh, Witten as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they haven't officially lost him yet, but most likely they will. Um, Here's the so thing. that's going to be difficult. Here's the thing I want to play. It's our favorite game. All right. I'll tell you the schedule. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you the wins and losses. You keep count for me. You ready? All right. Game number one, you're at Arizona. Is Josh Rosen playing this game? Probably not. Redskins get the win in Arizona. There you go. Then you're playing the Colts. Is Andrew Luck throwing a real football at this point? I love Shane O'Mac, one of our fans on Twitter, but I will give the Redskins a win 2-0 and to start the year. Then you play Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers is back, right? Sure. They just drafted yeah. two corners. The Packers are winning this game, no problem, even though it is in Washington, D.C. 2-1. Then you get an early bye week, so you go 2-1 and into the bye. Then you go at New Orleans. Monday night football, I'd love to give you a win. I can't. I got to go with Drew Brees. Then the Carolina Panthers. This is a toss-up game to me. I will give them the win right now. However, ask me later, it might be a Panther win. Then Dallas, I'll say you'll split it, so you'll get the home game. The Giants, I'll say you'll split it. They'll take this road game. So that's what? Five and two. Five and two. Atlanta, I'll give it to the Falcons. Tampa Bay, in Tampa Bay, I'm going to give it to the Redskins. Houston, I'll give it to the Redskins. Two road games, Dallas and Philly. I'm sorry, you're losing both of those games. New York, I said I'd give you the home game, so you'll have that one. Then Jacksonville on the road. If this is at home, I'd give you a fighting chance. Jacksonville with the win. Tennessee on the road. or Jacksonville, I'll give you the loss. Tennessee on the road, I'll give you the win. Philly at home, I'll give you the loss. Where right. did I, what did I sit at? So Because I was not keeping track. As our camera you had died, them at 7-9. 7-9. and nine. Seven and nine. So you throw a few toss-in games in there, like if they win more of those divisional games, if you, let's say the Jacksonville game, they get a win. Maybe they're the Saints eight game, game. Maybe they're 9-7. and seven. Not going to gangbusters 13 mm-hmm. wins on the season, but I wouldn't be surprised. I'd say I'll go 7-9 and nine to 9-7. Nine and seven. 
is what I could see them right now this year. Yeah. Which nine and seven that could be a playoff team. Mm-hmm. Could be a playoff team. Don't probably be surprised. not in the NFC. Don't be surprised. True, the NFC is tougher. I'm just saying, don't be surprised if this team shocks some people this year and are at least in that discussion halfway through the year. I really kind of feel, and we're not at this mode yet. So like I'm overhyping it? A little bit, but we're not in this whole prediction mode yet No, right now. But I part of me really feels that come this season mm-hmm. with what the Vikings are about to do, and then you look at the Redskins, people are just going to sit there and say, really? You let that guy leave for mm-hmm. this one? And I, I'm okay with Alex Smith. I don't want to call myself an Alex Smith fan. You're talking about letting Kirk Cousins leave and then getting Alex Smith. I, I exa- Exactly. I think that this team kind of took a step back in that direction. Mm-hmm. Then you add some pieces, which I like for sure. I like guys and things like that, but I don't think any of it's that thing that takes you to that next level. Mm-hmm. You are in a difficult uh, division, and you took away one of the best parts of your team this year. I just part of me feels like people are going to sit there and say, "Yep, you guys went the wrong way, wrong direction." I mean, I could, I could see that, but the only way I'm seeing that is, and I know Sean, who part of MVP, is not a huge Alex Smith fan. Am I saying Alex Smith is the best quarterback in the NFL? No, I am not saying that. However, the thing that I think will be the most interesting thing about this Redskin team mm-hmm. are the wide receivers. Right now, their starting three are going to be, you'll have Josh Doxson on the left side, Jameson Crowder on the right side, Paul Richardson in your slot. Besides that, yeah, you got uh, Simi Cobb, Cobbs, you've got Maurice Harris, you've got Brian Quick. None of these guys, none of the names jump off the page where it's like, oh man, yeah. that guy's awesome. It's really those top doesn't three. matter because you got a great uh, great tight end. You got Jordan Reed and Vernon Davis also. So, I mean, and we know how Alex Smith does like the tight end with uh, how much he matched up with Travis Kelsey. So we'll see Jordan Reed there. We'll see if Jordan Reed can be healthy also. The thing that I kind of think about, though, is will the wide receiver core help this team mm-hmm. enough? Because this team has everything they need to succeed. They got Deron Payne. They kind of shirt up the middle of that line. They got Josh Norman last year. They bring in Orlando Scandrick. They've got Ryan Kerrigan already. They've got pieces on the defense. Their offense, I think the running game is now solid with Darius Geis. They have a quarterback that they believe in, although I liked Kirk Cousins and thought they probably should have gave him a contract. Will this wide receiver core be good Great, or just pretty okay for the Redskins? That I yeah. think is the true question for this year. Yeah, uh, an additional Plus their question. division, how tough the division yeah. is. Yeah, an additional question I think is worth asking, even mm-hmm. though I don't necessarily know if there's that much to it. Okay, are you in any way, shape, or form concerned about character issues with guys? No, not at all. I'm would, not really either. I would but... say not at all. I think that the. And, of course, I'm not in the combine room. Neither of us Mm -hmm. are. I think it's a little bit blown a little out of portion. And I know what people are saying, like, oh, character issues. Well, he went to the Redskins. Redskins being Redskins. Mm Kind of like how when, uh, if you watch the Outcast this week, when they made the Baker Mayfield pick, how Kyle said, well, Brown's going to Browns. Um I don't. I don't think I'm taking too much stock. The only into thing it. that worries me about it is it. Because look at the did, character issues for Marshawn Lynch and look yeah. at how he ran. Uh, it did seem very questionable. Not questionable. It just. It seemed like everybody was in on it mm-hmm. because there's a lot of teams that needed a running back, and there's running backs that went before him mm-hmm. that are not as good as he is. So it seemed to me that almost everybody was in on it. Almost like Laramie Tunsil, and that's a completely different situation because we actually had a picture of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost like that, how everybody was saying no Let me until put it... until he got to what was it, the Dolphins? Yeah. Um, that's the only thing that which makes was me why put I a little bit of a pause on my it. conspiracy theory in that first round was that Josh Allen was going to be a Dolphin. Could that was my conspiracy theory, but the the thing I related to is one of the things I can't remember. If this was a comment section or on Twitter when we were talking about Orlando Brown. And the comment section, it was the comment section, they said, 
oh, there's no way that Orlando Brown, it was on our mock draft, no way he goes to the Eagles because the Eagles, one of the coaches chewed him out at the combine. One of the main coaches or the Mm -hmm. main teams that they referenced when they brought up the Darius Geis stuff was was the the Eagles. So the thing I'm looking at is, yeah, Geis to the Redskins, you could say, well, the Redskins don't know what they're doing. But look at Orlando Brown. Sean, I'm bringing him in again. He doesn't like Orlando Brown. I like Orlando Brown. I think he's going to be a good offensive tackle. Where did he go? Baltimore Ravens. Do you really think if there was a big chance of like him being lazy or him having issues on the field, off the field, do you think Ozzie Newsom would want to take him with his last draft class? Probably not. Probably not. So to me, I'm looking at this Geis but, situation of, is it Geis, is it Brown, or is it just the Eagles coaches well, are hard It could asses. just be that the Eagles coaches are dicks, yeah, essentially. Yeah, they're just hard asses. Uh, nice way of saying the, it. The flip but. side of it, it's Philadelphia. <laughs> you can get away with saying it anything Brotherly you want. Brotherly love, right? <laughs> uh, but the thing about that is, though, that you kind of accidentally make mm-hmm. my point. When something bad is being saying about one, one team, guy, one team just no, needs to come but out. But when and say something it. bad is coming out about one guy, yeah, but we'll, we're willing to take him. Mm-hmm. You know, with guys, everybody's avoiding him because it's not like there was a million offensive tackles being drafted. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, for guys, there was quite a bit of running backs who did not deserve to well, be taken ahead. of And him. I'll be honest, I criticized the Lions for not taking him. Thing that you brought up about Ragnow. Oh, right. Bill Belichick like Ragnow. Patricia mm-hmm. likes Ragnow. Oh, well, Darius Geis, character issues. What would Patricia's probably sitting there going, what would Bill Belichick do? It's possible. Belichick would pass on him, so I'm going to pass on him. Yeah. And I mean, look at the similarity. I'm not saying this is exactly what happened, but Bill Belichick takes an SEC running back. What does Matt Patricia do? I got to take an SEC running back. Sure. And we might be giving Matt Patricia a little bit more credit. In the draft process, we might be he gets. giving him not enough. Like, well, no, I'm saying that not he credit might... at all because we're just saying, oh, he's trying to be no, Bill no, I'm Belichick saying light. credit in the sense of he's making the choices. He oh, might have okay. had zero say in this. He for all we know, but uh, you know, it, it's a tough thing to know what the actual balance between what the GM mm-hmm. says and wants and what the coach says and wants. You know, it's the one thing I will say. You know who I'm very jealous of from this draft? Who's that? Colin Cowherd. Yeah. Did you know where he was for the um, NFL draft this year? I don't pay year? that much attention to where Colin Coward is and is not. I found out today, since mm. I was sick yesterday, I found out today he was in the Chargers war room for the draft. Hmm. Well, he is a big Chargers guy. He got to spend the draft, especially the first round, in the war room. I think that'd be awesome. Sure. Could you imagine spending the I mean, first the Chargers, round in the Bears war room? As much as I, as I like to bolt up. Just being a fly on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Chargers need all the good love that they can get, all the, the good, goodwill. The good mojo. I mean, there there was what I just saw the story about some guy that uh, refused to call them the L.A. Chargers and called <laughs> yeah. them the San Diego Chargers, uh, which is hilarious. But, um, yeah, they need all the love they can get. And Cowherd is one of the few guys in mm-hmm. big media that really gives love to the Chargers. Any final... Besides me. Besides me. Because <laughs> you've the been bolting up for years, man. Yeah, I'm the only other guy besides Colin Cowherd who uh, wants to give any respect to the Cardinals. Any final Our, the things Chargers. you think we should bring up about Geis and the Redskins? No, the only thing that I, I I asked you about it, I'm just, I don't necessarily know that I believe it, but it weighs in my mind a little bit about mm-hmm. the potential character issues. Um, but, you know, who knows? We'll see. Time will tell. Well, and this is where you guys come in. Let us know down below. What do you think of the guys pick up for the Redskins? Was it the steal of the draft for the Redskins to get Darius guys? Let us know what you guys think down below in the comments section. But Mark, let's close out the podcast talking about quarterbacks. And if you listened to our first round podcast last, what was it, Friday, everything would have came out. Sean, Dave, and I, all we did was talk quarterbacks in that podcast after the first round. But Mark, you were not there to talk quarterbacks. I have not Mm -hmm. gotten your gauge on the quarterbacks. And one thing we did not look at with all these quarterbacks is which one is going to start day one? So what we're going to do to end the podcast tonight is which of the rookie quarterbacks should start day one? What are your thoughts? Who should be starting day one out of the rookies? Well, this is a big group because we're not talking just first round. We're talking anything. But really, it's the first rounders that we would 
Yeah, expect I, to start. Essentially, for this, you can you can put anybody who wasn't drafted in the first round out of it because mm-hmm. none of them are starting day one. Uh, you can or should uh, you can take. Lamar Jackson, you can take him out of it because Joe Flacco is there. Yeah. Even though people are very down on Joe Flacco. He's done at the end of the year. I, I'm trusting Joe Flacco more than I'm trusting Lamar Jackson for right now. Yeah. We'll see what happens later. Um, so really when it comes down to these other guys, the one who should start is funny to me because mm-hmm. he's the one that for sure is not going to start day one. He's the only one who I can say 100% will not start day one. Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen. He's the most NFL-ready quarterback. He's the one who I feel like you might not like his character or whatever, uh, his attitude, but he's the guy who I feel like if I put him in there week one, we got a chance to win this game. The thing that, and I'm going to say this again, for those of you who did not hear it when we did the first-round podcast, and I don't know if you listened to that segment, Mark, the thing, the night of the draft, he had every opportunity Mm -hmm. To prove me wrong. Prove me wrong when I say, yes, you should be my number one quarterback off the board, but because of your character issues, I'm going to put Alan Darnold and Mayfield all ahead of you. What did he say after getting drafted? I don't mind the nine other mistakes thing because Draymond Green did that in the NBA. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, hey, I want to prove you're wrong. NBA and NFL are a little different, though. It was the second part where he said it pisses him off to where it's like, why are you worried about who didn't pick you? Yeah. Be happy for who did pick you because you're in the NFL and you're still a top 10 pick. You're also in the better spot out of any of those guys. I'd rather play for the Cardinals than any of those guys. His comments just screamed entitled little brat to me. But see, I'm really not that worked up about that type of of thing for for me. Whatever. I kind of wish in a sense it was like, I, I agree with you in the sense of just like, just who cares? Because mm-hmm. this is your team now. Talk about your team. Yeah. Talk you know, about where you are, not about yeah. where you're not. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, if it helps you win games, cool. Mm-hmm. If you being pissed well, off at those nine teams is going to help that's you try and be better. I, and that's then why that's I great. don't mind the, oh, nine mistakes before me. It's mm-hmm. the. I'm pissed off because it's like, but it's the same thing. Really, like, it's the same thing. But when he kept he kept going on about where he's not, like, mm-hmm. oh, like, it's like talk about where you are. Like if he would have just said nine other mistakes, but I'm happy to be mm-hmm. in Arizona. Blah blah blah. Arizona, Arizona. To Arizona. me, I don't see the difference between those two things. If you're okay with one, you should be okay with the other. Don't harp on it is what I'm saying. I agree. You with can that. mention it. Don't harp on. And it like I've he actually did. been okay with everything that Josh Rosen has said. But I did mm-hmm. tweet out that night of like, all right. Now I think enough is enough. Mm -hmm. But I let him have that moment because he was in the moment. Yeah. Same thing with Cam Newton loses the Super Bowl and he's pouting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let him pout because he just lost the biggest game of his life. Yeah. You know, I'm going to let him be upset about that. Um, It's really the what happens next. I'm going to be that get off my lawn guy. Just be happy you're in the NFL. Be Mm -hmm. happy, A, you're in the NFL. B, you're a top 10 pick still. Yeah. At least he's not Tom Brady saying that uh, he doesn't feel appreciated. Yeah. Uh, that's not exactly what he said, but that's the gist of it. Appreciated, Do you feel man. appreciated? I have. Are, no, are you happy? I have my moments. The thing you know, with the Cardinals, though, is here's what I think with the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. I think the Josh Rosen is going to be the Mitchell Trubisky of this year. And I say that because Sam Bradford will start about six games in. Either injury will happen or the Cardinals will be losing more games. And by six games in, from like six to nine games in, the Cardinals will go, all right, we drafted the kid to be the franchise. This ain't working. We got to do something different and just throw him in. I really don't think that Sam Bradford will lose the job because they're losing games. The only way because of injury. The only way Sam Bradford gets this job taken away from him is if it's injury. You know, because... He's a good quarterback. You're he just totally can't over, stay healthy. You're totally overlooking Mike Glennon, the ginger I, giraffe. I am. <laughs> I, you mentioned Trubisky. Glennon is there. Yep. Uh, Glennon is there for our, what people said was he was a good mentor mm-hmm. for Trubisky. Essentially, so he's going to be the mentor to Josh there. Rosen. He's going to be the Mark Sanchez yeah. in this situation, which is funny because Glennon and Sanchez were both there in Chicago. But um, 
you know, yeah, for for without a doubt, I think he's the best one to start, and I think he's in a good place to do it. He's got an amazing running back back there. I mean, you know, Fitz uh, Fitzgerald should still be there hopefully mm -hmm. this year, right? Yeah. Um, They also got Christian Kirk, who will be a good slot option for them. mm -hmm. So you have good options here. David Johnson, hopefully returning from injury. Oh, he'll be back. Uh, Well, returning back to form is what I'm saying. Yeah, that defense. It's not as great as it used to be necessarily, but mm-hmm. it's still a good defense. It's a good place to be. But, yeah, I mean, it's just – I even for me, wanting to see him play, but, no, you can't let – you just paid money for Sam Bradford. You can't let him sit. Here's what I think will happen, and I'm making this prediction about the Cardinals now. I think October 28th at home – it's a Sunday late afternoon game. Which week? Against the 49ers, week eight. That will be Josh Rosen's first start. It'll either be that game or week 10 because they got to buy week nine. There so it'll go. either be at home against San Fran, week eight, on the road at KC, week 10. I'm going week eight because I'd want to start the rookie off at home mm-hmm. rather than an arrowhead, which is one of the most toughest places to play. In the NFL. I still don't think that they're going to get a choice the reason, in this case. The reason why I say that is I want to read you off the first eight games, and you tell me cr- I'm crazy for thinking what I'm thinking. Starting off against Washington. Yeah, it's at home. Alex Smith is better than Sam Bradford. That team is a little see, bit better you're on going paper. into it in the wrong way. I don't care about wins or losses. This is what I'm looking at. No, no. Week two, Rams. Good Loss. defense. No, well, I don't. I don't care about the wins and losses. Listen see, to what I I'm do, saying. Though. Rams, Aaron Donald's gonna crush him. So you're making excuses for Sam Bradford, is what you're doing? No, no, I'm not making excuses for Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford's a good quarterback. What mm-hmm. I'm saying is, Rams will destroy him defensively. They will sit on him. Him meaning Sam Bradford. Sam or Josh Bradford. Rowe? Okay. Chicago ha- supposedly defense. is gonna have a better defense this year. The Seahawks are still a good defense. Forty ers and the Vikings. 49ers don't lose games though. No, I don't care about wins and losses. I do though. That's I'm, what I'm talking about you. defense. Sam Bradford is not gonna I go get out it. there Minnesota and lose the and, game. Minnesota and Denver also yes. have great defenses. Sam Bradford is not going to lose his job because he's not a good quarterback. This is he what, is a good quarterback. He's only gonna lose it by injury. This is what I am saying. I am saying he is going to lose it by non-injury. Let's be honest. He could be injured week See, three. But, but what I'm sitting there thinking is, this is my prediction. Let me mm-hmm. make my prediction, then you can but tell me I'm wrong. you're just wrong. <laughs> tell me I'm wrong after you I are. make it. I want to make it so they can tell me I'm wrong, too. Washington, loss. At LA, the Rams, loss. Mm-hmm. The Bears, loss. Defense is supposed to be better. Seattle, like hearing that. loss. Jimmy Garoppolo, don't lose. Loss. At Minnesota, loss. Denver at home, loss. San Francisco, I feel like it's going to be either, and that one will be a loss if Sam Bradford starts. I think what it's going to be is Arizona starts 0-7, 0-8, and then they have the kind of thought in their head of, do we let Sam Bradford play it out, or do we start Josh Rosen, who we traded up for to be our franchise, and hey, Sam, it was great, but mm-hmm. you we but you knew what you were Here, getting into. Just ask Mike Glenn and how it went in Chicago. Well, technically, they didn't. Neither one of those guys knew what they were getting into. But when, I mean, when the, they signed the contract thing but, of like we can get rid of after one year. And it here's my really question hurt us. for you: Why do you suddenly think Sam Bradford is a bad quarterback? Oh, I'm not saying no, 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 no. I'm not saying Sam Bradford's a bad quarterback. Mm-hmm. I'm saying I think this team as a as a collective whole is not going to be able to beat. To me, any of the teams in their first eight games, and then the team will basically say, well, you know what? Do we either continue losing with Sam Bradford and stick to keeping Josh Rosen on the bench, or we do have the most pro-ready quarterback of the rookies, do we just let him loose? Do we just let him play? And Mm -hmm. at this point, we're 0-8. The best we can do is 8-8. But here's the thing, though. If you really think they're going to go 0-8... Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little bit of a stretch, but that's what I'm looking at right now. But then on. the rest of their schedule... Well, I'm not is saying a, they're going to win every single game with Josh Rosen. So then what's the point? Um, because do you, I think Josh Rosen... You, although so I, I was just, just going to ask you this question. I don't think Sam Bradford's a bad quarterback. Mm-hmm. 
I think that Josh Rosen, it would be more beneficial to have him play this year. Who than do to you sit think gives him the better Bradford. chance to win the game? Josh Rosen. Okay. Well, then that's the that's, that's what the answer to the question yeah. is. You think he should be starting over Sam Bradford? Sam Bradford's not terrible, but mm-hmm. I like Josh Rosen better. To me, it's just the I do like Josh Rosen. He's probably my favorite of these quarterbacks for you know this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I Baker just think it's asinine that there. you would trade up for the most pro ready quarterback and then sit him an entire year. Yeah, but you just paid a good amount of money to Sam Bradford. Well, and I get that you only you only did that because you didn't know which quarterback you were going to get. Let's yeah. be honest. Oh, for sure. But if you, you got, got the guy for five years. If you got Josh Allen or Baker Mayfield or even Lamar Jackson, mm-hmm. this is a different and story. And you were just complaining a little bit about his character, his mm-hmm. attitude. It would be a nice uh, little dish of humble pie to, to say. To just fucking lose. You, no, not to lose. To say, you sit. You sit and you wait. See, I like either I like either or. I, I, mm-hmm. Either or to me would work. Because sitting him is be like, no, no, no. Know your role, rookie. Yeah. Um, but at the same time... I think going in there, hell, I would even love for him to start week one Mm -hmm. because I would just get his face pounded in by every one of these defenses and then be like, Mm -hmm. whoa, all right, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. I'm just a rookie. I've got things to learn. Like you said, a big slice of humble pie served cold by the the, uh, Los Angeles Rams. I hope that he kind of... Calms it down a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, but we're gonna see what happens with also, him. Also, like I did mention when we did that draft podcast, is mm-hmm. having Larry Fitzgerald. I think will help. Yeah. Oh, what for are, sure. Here's another quarterback I think will start day one. Sam Darnold. Sam Sa- Darnold. I think he. I think here's he's starting thing. day one, man. I don't disagree with you, but should he? The should I think he, he know. will should he though is the question should he know I don't think he should I think he's got a really good mentor there in McCown and mm-hmm. they should let McCown start for a Here's little bit question. so he can ease his way in who's going to be the true mentor though because the thing how it used to be when you and I were younger mm-hmm. is most teams would have three quarterbacks the starter would do his thing yeah and then the the veteran would be like later on his career, like a Vinny Testaverde type of character, yep. or like a Mark Brunel later on, or a um, Drew Bledsoe later on, where mm-hmm. it's like, I've been here a while. I'm the third stringer. I know I'm not going in. I'm here to teach you while the starter does I'm a glorified does his thing. quarterback coach. Basically, yeah. yeah. I'm here to teach you while the quarterback goes out there and does yeah. his thing. Yeah, I, I wonder about that, but. If it wasn't for the fact that that's the case, that, then Teddy's that guy because I don't think Teddy starts over. McCown. I don't consider Teddy to be that glorified. Uh, I don't glorify is not no, a good no, word, but, but what, that like seasoned, that tested. But what veteran. I'm saying is, if McCown's out there playing, Teddy's mm-hmm. going to be the one on the bench to kind of talk Honestly, with Darnold about things. I feel like Teddy's going to get cut. He could. I I don't. I just don't necessarily know that he's going to be completely healthy. He could with drafting Darnold. I think they're saying that. Sorry, Teddy, you're number three Mm -hmm. because Josh McCown is the guy who's proven to them. You know, they played with him. But Josh McCown also was the guy who went out immediately and said, you know, I'm here for anything that he needs. Mm -hmm. He can call me day or night. I'm available to talk. Uh, You know, do you think Sam Darnold's going to win the job in camp? Probably. Not in camp. No, I changed. Not in camp. I think he'll probably win it in the preseason. Okay. Well, um, camp preseason, I'm kind of yeah. I just think together. of like camp is more of he won it in practice. Yeah. I think he's gonna win it on the field. Okay, um, which is weird because I actually think of well because he's gonna probably get most of the playing time. because yeah. Josh McCown will get the first team reps. Exactly. So taking the Arizona Cardinals out of it because mm-hmm. they're Sam Bradford's a completely different situation. Yeah. But when you're looking at AJ McCarron, uh, Josh McCown, Tyrod Taylor, Josh McCown probably is the guy I trust the most mm-hmm. to be my guy starting for now but i really would be surprised if in new york you know there that's a big loud crowd out there Mm -hmm. they're not demanding that darnold starts and that the team doesn't listen to that demand i would be surprised if it doesn't happen here's what i think will be interesting is if i know this game's in cleveland it's not in new york but if they go into cleveland let's say they go one and one against the Lions and the Dolphins because Matt Patricia. The one thing I'll say, he does know how to coach against. He's familiar with the Jets. Yeah, 
let's say they go one and one, pick your poison, whoever you want them to win two, lose two in those first two. If they go in one and one and lose in Cleveland and Baker Mayfield is starting, I think Jet fans will get upset that Sam Darnold's not starting. I would Especially think so. if yeah. it's something to where it's like Josh McCown played well, but Sam Darnold could have won us that game or put us into a better position to win that game. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough one, but I feel like Sam Darnold's that guy who he's going to impress people you think in so? the preseason. I don't necessarily know that he's going to impress people in the mm-hmm. actual season because things are a little different then. But when he's playing those uh, you know, second stringers, I think he's going to make himself look really good, and he'll get a chance to probably take that job. Because the thing that is going to be – and let me look at Buffalo's schedule before I go ahead and say this because I think we're both in agreement. I think you said it. Um, earlier that Joe Flacco is starting. Yes. I yeah. expect Joe Flacco to be starting this entire season, yep. and then after this year he'll get cut, and He's Lamar the, Jackson will be Smith. the guy. It's yeah. the Alex Smith situation with the Kansas City Chiefs and Mahomes. Whereas with New York and Buffalo, well, New York then has the most interesting situation to me, because if you look at their schedule, obviously them and Buffalo play twice. They're yep. in the same division. But they also play Cleveland. Out of all the teams with this first-round quarterback, they are the only one to play the majority of the rookie quarterbacks. Yeah, I know two of them are Josh Allen, but go ahead, live with it for a little bit. If they lose that Baker Mayfield game, if Baker Mayfield even starts, and it's not Tyrod Taylor at that point, and Josh McCown is in, that could be the turning point to where it's like, ah, fuck, we got to start him. We got to start him. To where if they go further and they lose to Josh Allen, I don't know how Sam Darnold ain't starting Week 10, yeah. which is the first time they would play Buffalo. Yeah, if he doesn't start Week 1, I do not think it'll take more than three or four games for Darnold to get his chance to start. I don't think that this year is going to be what we've seen out of a year. Well, because like last year, mm-hmm. think about it. The teams that took quarterbacks were teams that needed quarterbacks but had something they could do. Yeah, I mean, Watson started right off the bat, but Trubisky, they got Glenn in beforehand purposely mm-hmm. saying that, nope, well, this is what's going to happen. Deshaun Watson wasn't the starter. It was that bad game one. Mm-hmm. It was that terrible game one by Tom Savage. Yeah, which that, doesn't surprise anybody. That at halftime, Deshaun Watson came in and won that job in the second half. Yeah, and Mahomes obviously was never going to start yeah. because of Alex Smith. Mm-hmm. This is a different year. This is what we're used to. Teams being forced Here, to play a guy because they don't have anything else. Here's a little game I want to play with Darnold really quick. I'm going to read off their schedule. Mm -hmm. You interject when you think will be, let's say McCown starts day one. Okay. Interject when you think the game. I already know where it is. So it'll be at Detroit. McCown. Home against the Dolphins. McCown. At Cleveland. Darnold. So you're thinking, so are you saying he starts that game or after that game? No, that game. Okay. The So is it, does it matter if they're winning or losing those first two? No, because the, because I don't. Here's what it comes down to. I, like I said, I think he's going to be impressive, mm-hmm. and I don't think that the New York Jets can pass up sitting him for long. That, but can pass up on the storyline of mm-hmm. rookie to rookie battle. First quarterback, second quarterback, this early in their career, mm-hmm. they're in New York. I mean, I know Rex Ryan's not there anymore, but they're still in New York. I don't think they can pass and, up on the storyline. And I know we got a comment in one of our comment sections about the, I think it was the last Jet one when we talked about Darnold getting picked. Mm-hmm. The comment basically said, basically said something about the Jets sitting quarterbacks. Like they sat Hatt- Hackenberg, they sat that, Petty. They are different even, than Sam yeah. Darnold. That's what I was going to say. Not even on the same not, playing field. Not even in the same book. Not even yeah. the same chapter of the book, if they're and in actually, the same book. if anything, I think that makes our our point of he should start early, mm-hmm. uh, because you know they are not going to treat Darnold the way they tra- uh, were treating Petty or Patty. Hackenberg. Mm-hmm. You know, those were guys who they were basically saying, "Yeah, we'll figure it out." This is a guy who's saying early on, mm-hmm. we're going to let this guy play. What about Baker Mayfield? He's the true one because, like, I think it was before we recorded the segment. We're saving the best for last, y- I see. No, we still haven't talked about Josh Allen. That's what I said, oh, the okay. best for last. I thought you were talking about Baker Mayfield. Nope. But the thing that I, like you mentioned before we recorded this was Hugh Jackson, I guess, today was like, well, you know, I promised Tyrod he's our starter. 
All right, we'll see. We'll right. see what happens. I mean, he, I mean, literally, he said like that he made a promise and he try and he's gonna keep it. And I'm like, that is not reassuring to me. Baker starting week one against Pittsburgh. If you want to reassure Tyrod Taylor that he has this job, September, you say no. Tyrod is my starter because he's better. Could you imagine if Baker Mayfield wins the job, the first game's a home game against Pittsburgh, and Baker Mayfield beats the Pittsburgh Steelers to the, start his the NFL career? The only thing that would be better is if it was Baltimore. Because he's, he's the savior of Cleveland. I think, I think for Cleveland fans... Finally beating Big Ben I, I get would be you. a bigger uh, No, momentum. I get you, but ask these Cleveland fans about Art Modell. Oh, I know. They care about I, no, beating no, no, the Baltimore I get, Ravens. I get that side because they took their team. Yeah. But the Pittsburgh Steelers, like, this is your team. Like, eventually, if he does eventually it, it's like, get over Cleveland. If, but I know you never will, so I'm if not he saying does get it, over it. Does he bust out a brown flag and just... Plant it. I would. It's right in the it, middle. Of, it would be his home it's, field. It's a home field. So never it. mind. <laughs> He'd have but to wait until week eight. <laughs> maybe he can get. Oh, that would have been so perfect. Can we switch those two? No, make no. it a home and away. Week seventeen, he wins that game. Plants the flag right in the middle of uh, uh, Baltimore. That'd the be Browns perfect. flag. This is our franchise. Basically, is what he's saying. This is the one quarterback that I think should he start day one. Maybe not. However, I think that Baker Mayfield is mm-hmm. there. It's kind of like the Tim Tebow aspect to it, to where there's too much hype around this kid to not start him week one. Well, it's a couple. I things. get you've got Tyrod Taylor. I get that I would be safer with Tyrod right now than I would Baker. But there's something special about this Baker kid that I like. Yeah, I. I mean, when you draft a quarterback number one overall, you expect him to start. I don't mm-hmm. know what's going on with Jared Goff. That's a whole other situation. Well, that was Jeff Fisher being exactly. Jeff Fisher. Uh, yeah, that's some 7 and that, bullshit. And that's another thing. Like mm-hmm. um, I heard Colin Cowherd mention this. Jeff Fisher tried to fit Jared Goff square peg, square hole, whereas McVay came in and said, no, 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 we're going to build the hole around the peg. Yeah. We're going to build this offense around the quarterback. So for me, when it comes to Baker Mayfield, I like Tyrod Taylor. I've talked about mm-hmm. him, and I like him a lot. And he's I think not he's bad. A good I don't think he's a bad quarterback. Yeah. He's not amazing, but he's a good quarterback. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. You draft a quarterback number one overall. You expect him to start, of course. Um, Cleveland can't really afford to mess things up. I think it's part of it, too. Uh, for for Hugh Jackson, he needs to get this right. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not completely him. Obviously, he's not the GM. But he needs this to work. He is 1-31. in I do not care if I am beating a dead horse. I will say it nonstop because it's awful. It is terrible. He is 1-31. in You went from 1-15. in It's got to get better from here. No, there's only one place you can go lower than that, and they (laughs) did it. Yep. That's impressive. Cleveland, I like you guys. I'm not trying to harp down on you. I just think you, you should have fired your coach. You do love to rag on the Wolverine, though. I Because he's a bad coach. <laughs> he's a bad head coach. He's a great offensive coordinator, bad head coach. Mm-hmm. But anyways, although he's really lucked out from some great things going on in uh, for the Bengals. But anyways, that's besides the point. When you have a guy like Baker Mayfield, he's an electric player. He is, I hate saying it, but he is that it factor kind of guy. It's not even a debate for me. Tyrod, congratulations, your quarterback number two. This is Baker Mayfield's team. I'm not even having the debate. Mm-hmm. It's not a competition. It is Baker's job. Well, and I'd be with Baker or Tyrod. It kind of feels weird to say this. There are some winnable games for the Browns based off of what they did. Do I expect them to beat Pittsburgh or New Orleans to start the season? No, but it's like the Jets are winnable. The Raiders are winnable. The Ravens could be winnable. Tampa Week 7 could be winnable. I mean, Cincinnati Week 9, maybe, or Week 16, I'll give you the home game. Maybe one of those you win. Like, there could be a couple. Am I saying yeah. the Browns make the playoffs? I'm not saying that. But, like, based off of the kind of, the thing with Cleveland that's interesting, though, it's not just one position. They completely turned around this team. Added yeah. wide receivers, added a running back. Added um, defensive back help, brought in Demarius Randall, drafted Denzel Ward. They basically revamped this team to where it's completely different than the one we saw last year. I would almost be willing to buy the hype on the Cleveland Browns. To make the playoffs? Yeah. 
I actually okay. almost would because of the fact that I think there's a lot of things going the wrong direction. I've been mm-hmm. saying that for a while in this division. This division's been going the Cincinnati, wrong way. Cincinnati, Baltimore. <laughs> I mean, Baltimore couldn't even win a in, win it in your in game last right. year. Right? Uh, yeah, the the Pittsburgh you Steelers are Bills, still uh, far and away. You let Bills Mafia in the playoffs, and look I, at how they party. I think that. Based on this roster and based on what Cleveland did, Mm -hmm. and I do like Baker Mayfield, even though he's got some things to fix. I still do like him a lot. He's that guy who I feel like even if, you know, things get difficult, he's still going to do things to get his team back in the game. Um, And they've got wide receivers. You might not think it because it's Cleveland, and it's been a while since they've had good wide receivers, but they have them. They do. They have, uh, not only did they get Nick Chubb, but they have running backs. They have a Pretty damn good defense. Mm-hmm. The problem still for me is the reason why I'm not going to buy the hype on Cleveland. I do not trust Hugh Jackson. It is plain and simple. I do not trust him. I don't think he's going to be good. I think they should have gotten rid of him. If they had gotten rid of him and they managed to, instead of New York getting Shermer, mm-hmm. uh, they actually were to grab him. You know, if that is something that happened here, then I would sit there and say Cleveland Browns playoffs. Book it right now. I'm saying it's going to happen. But they still have this guy who I don't believe in. That's the problem. But apparently they're saying that, hey, maybe one more good draft class and we'll we'll be there. Um, I don't know. But let's look at the last guy, Josh Allen. And basically the thing I want to ask you here is this to me is the most interesting one. Because Josh Allen coming into this draft, both you and I said he probably has to sit a year or two. Then he gets drafted by the Bills, and it's like, is he going to win? Could he win the job from A.J. McCarron? Is A.J. McCarron the definite starter week one? What's going through your mind about Josh Allen, and will he start week one for the Buffalo Bills? Well, I think he will start week one. Uh, And really, here's the thing for it. Um, He is a – he is kind of an answer, I -hmm. think, for – the Buffalo Bills, they view it. Why did the Buffalo Bills hate Tyrod Taylor? That's an important question. Because we talked about it a lot. It is an important question. And when you think about Tyrod Taylor, what is Tyrod's biggest flaw to his game? He He's doesn't, not a pocket passer? No, he doesn't take risks. Okay. He is such it's a conservative. conservative quarterback. Josh Allen takes risks. Josh Allen takes risks like it's his job. Mm-hmm. And... That I really some think would, some would say poor decision making. Yes. Well, I mean, we're going to get to <laughs> it, but you know, he takes risks no matter what. Mm-hmm. That is why they wanted this culture shift because honestly, part of it is even if it doesn't work out, at least we know we tried something different. Mm-hmm. And you have Jamal Adams, safety out of the New York Jets, saying that he can't wait to catch passes from one of my favorite quarterbacks. Josh I Allen. saw that, and I was like, oh, man. Is he a wide receiver now? Like, I, I was really confused, and then I figured it out, I, and I was I like, lo- oh, now I remember it. I love Adams. I now, love him so Now, to be much. fair, because someone will put it in the comments, mm-hmm. he had zero interceptions last year, so, I, I love, mean, that's a I big comment. It, I love it, though. Like, Except last year, like I, I like this line rather than the mm-hmm. line last year where he says, "I'm going to die on the field." Right. Like, now, if you are that. not, uh, if your team is not in the AFC mm-hmm. East, follow uh, or the follow AFC Jamal East. Adams. Yeah, follow <laughs> Jamal Adams on Twitter because he he rules on Twitter. He really does. He's one of those guys that you got to follow. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways. I really purely think that it is the opposite of Tyrod Taylor. That's why they targeted Josh Allen. Because to me, I look at a guy who makes bad decisions, constantly is running around and throwing to the opposite side of the field or throwing off his back foot, Mm -hmm. overthrowing wide receivers. That man can throw at 70 yards, but the receiver only went 50. You know, I look at all these flaws, all these issues, and if he starts week one, he is going to fail. Mm -hmm. He's got... I I, I, I want to say that he's got all the things you, you that John Elway wants. I know that this is not the Broncos, but he's got those, he's tall, he's got big hands, he's got a rocket arm. That's those things that those old style quarterbacks, those old style GMs want in a guy. Mm-hmm. If he has time, he can be successful. If you play him day one, he will fail. The if, problem is AJ McCarron's the, the only other option. 
if Josh Allen starts this year, I want him to start week 13. And the reason why I say that, let me read off the first, what, 12? No, first 11 games for Buffalo. At Baltimore, probably not the hardest. The L.A. Chargers. At Minnesota. At Green Bay. Home against Tennessee. At Houston. All right, not the hardest there. At Indy. Is Andrew Luck coming back? Home against New England. Home against Chicago. At New York. Home against Jacksonville. Yeah, they're not all dominant games. But after that, it becomes Miami twice, Detroit once, the Jets. Oh, and then you get New England on the road. So if I start him after week 13, it depends. If they're in a playoff push and McCarron's your guy, go ahead. But if you have a losing record, which they could because now they have a tougher schedule because they made the playoffs last year. If they have a losing record and he starts week 13, that is a small sample size to get him regular season games. And it's not the hardest schedule where it's like, all right, it's Miami twice, New York once, Detroit, and then, all right, we'll give you a tough one at Foxborough. But we're out of it at that point. We're early on. I don't want him rookie year going up at Minnesota, at Green Bay, at Indianapolis, which I think they'll be better this year. And I don't want him going up against Jacksonville yeah. with that decision making. So, I mean, for me... I think McCarron's going to be the starter. Josh Allen, I would not play at all this year, but if I had to play him this year, week 13 would be the week I kind of look for. I don't really want him to start at all because, I, like I said, he's got a lot of things that need to be fixed. Mm-hmm. Um, I I just I see, don't that, see the value for, and for that's where they why traded with, up to get him. And this is why I know this is a little different, but with the Bills, I still think back and go, why didn't you take Josh Rosen then? Yeah, when they traded Un- up, I really kind of thought they would. Unless, I mean, it could be something as simple as we didn't like the we didn't like the off the field stuff, and we don't like his personality. Like, yeah. if, if that's it, fine. Like, I get it. Like, if you don't like a kid's personality, I don't want you drafting him. But part of me is like, you kind of seem like a team that needs a pro ready quarterback mm-hmm. more than someone. Else, because like yeah. Tyrod Taylor is better than AJ McCarron. J- yeah, Josh McCown's not better than AJ McCarron. Um, I would say Josh McCown's probably better. Than we've AJ got McCarron. Sam Bradford that I would say is better than AJ McCarron. AJ McCarron to me is. I would say jo- Josh McCown might be a push, and that's me maybe undervaluing the Jets. I tend to do that. Yeah, I just don't really. To me, AJ McCarron is not anything I'm I'm that crazy about. Anything I'm that excited about. Mm-hmm. I feel that AJ McCarron. But I'm McCarron, not excited about Josh McCown either. That's why I think I'm like this. Yeah, I I just feel like AJ McCarron's going to be that guy who just never really accomplish, not necessarily accomplishes, but never turns out into anything in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pull a little bit of a. Uh, I'm going to reach deep in the bag of the the Buffalo Bills here and pull something out that I think is. Going to be difficult. So, like I said, there's a lot of things I think that Josh Allen needs to ha- to have worked on, and I wonder about it because this is not the only guy, but this is going to be someone who is kind of responsible for it. David Culley, I think his last name. Correct me if I'm wrong, Bills okay. fans. Um, you probably never. If you're not a Bills fan, you probably have never heard of this guy, uh, or maybe a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Um, he's the quarterbacks coach mm-hmm. for for the Buffalo Bills, and he's going to be the guy who's responsible for. Not fixing, but molding a lot of these things with, uh, you know, with Josh Allen. Now, the thing that I kind of worry about, sure, he was with Kansas City from 13 to 16, so he had some overlap with uh, with Mahomes, with, um, with um, the other one, Alex Smith, almost blanked out his name, and he's got the, the blandest name out there, and I couldn't remember it. But the problem is, he wasn't the quarterback's coach. Mm-hmm. He was the wide receiver's coach. So... I, I and, and that's not saying that this, these these things can't translate or anything like that. And I don't know tons and tons about his history. I mean, he could have been an amazing quarterback back in the day. I don't really know the guy very well, but um, and he did a good job when he was a wide receivers coach. Uh, you know, obviously Jeremy Macklin was there, things like that. So I just wonder: is he going to be a guy who can fix these things? Is McDermott going to be the guy who is going to really make sure this quarterback works out? Because 
what your dream scenario is. You'll know it very well. You love Brett Favre. Mm -hmm. Your dream scenario is, sure, he's going to throw one or two interceptions in a game, and they're going to be dumb decisions. He will run that way when things break down. He's feeling the pressure. He throws it across his body straight to Jamal Adams. That is going to happen in a game. But what's also going to hopefully happen in a game, this is your dream scenario, is that he's going to throw one or two 50, 60-yard passes. And they can't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. He just took the top off of that defense. That is your dream scenario. You are never going to completely mean, fix everything. And the one thing I will throw out, mm-hmm. a guy who maybe more developed in his second year, what were we saying about Zay Jones last year? He could be a receiver that could take tops off of defense. Yeah, he, he didn't do as much as he should have done la- or that you'd expect him to do last year. So you're kind of hoping that he plus it'll be fixes some of that. Plus it'll be interesting to see who Josh Allen kind of builds relationships with, like throwing the football. Will it be Calvin Benjamin? Will it be Zay Jones? Will it be Andre Holmes? Will it be Charles Clay, the tight end? We don't know. It's going to be interesting to see where those relationships kind of lie and who starts to become his main go-to guy when he's eventually starting because I think that you drafted Josh Allen for one reason, for him to eventually start. Yeah. It's just an interesting one to me. I mean, I like a lot of things that the Bills did in in the uh, in the draft. I mean, I love Tremaine Edmonds. I think mm-hmm. that Tremaine Edmonds very very possibly also could be one of the best to get linebackers in the NFL. He was a top a ten talent years. for both of us. Yeah, I mean, he is a guy who is not that way yet. Mm-hmm. He still has time he needs to develop, but he has such a high ceiling. I love that one. You know, they address corner mm-hmm. later in the draft, but they did. Uh, you know, so they're definitely doing a lot of good things, and they're a team that's kind of one of those on-the-cusp teams. Um, to me, and it might just be me being down on Josh Allen, mm-hmm. I've never been high on Josh Allen through this whole process, and I just don't see it really panning out unless he has a lot of time to sit and work on these kind of issues. He needs the bill. I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. He needs the bills to be very. I haven't said anything to get cut off. I know, I, I but I see you. He needs the bills to be very Just patient for, my spot. for him. He cannot afford the bills to pull like a, a Cleveland or something mm-hmm. like that, like Colt McCoy, yeah, or Jimmy Clausen <laughs> for uh for the Panthers or he Christian can't, Ponder. Christian he Ponder, started. yeah. He can't afford for this team to say, well, or, you know, Glennon is another example too. Mm -hmm. Well, you started a little bit. It didn't go well, but now we're really high up and we're going to take this other guy. You know, he can't afford something. Mm -hmm. He needs time to develop. Uh, Otherwise, you know, it's going to turn into Paxton Lynch. So here's what we're going to do at the end. Really quickly, both of us said Lamar Jackson. We don't see him starting this year. Yep. I think Joe Flacco plays this whole year, gets cut at the Agreed. end of the season. Lamar Jackson's a starter throughout. Yep. Just kind of clarifying, Josh Rosen, what's going to be the deal? Josh Rosen will not start uh, day one, even though he could. Mm-hmm. He will not start until Sam Bradford gets hurt. I think he starts week eight, I will say. He won't start week one. He'll start week eight. Sam Bradford mm-hmm. will start week one. Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield starts day one. I think he starts day one also. Well, day one of the preseason. Day one. Should start. I think he wins it in the preseason. I think he probably will starts too, day but one. he should. I then feel sorry for Tyrod Taylor because, I mean, Nathan Peterman weren't, wasn't going to beat you out, but Baker Mayfield was. Yep. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold, I think he probably starts week one. I'm going to say no, he doesn't. McCown I think he, starts week one. I think he probably does. I think he'll probably win it. He's the only one I don't know when he starts. I know that it will be this season. I don't know when it will be this season. Let's see. We've got Rosen, Darnold, Mayfield, Lamar Jackson, Allen. Allen. I'm going to say no. He doesn't start this year. Oh, I'm surprised. At I, all. I honestly kind of feel like he's going to be like a week one starter. You think so? Because A.J. A. McCarron's not going to win the job. It's a, here's the thing, too, mm-hmm. actually. It's worth pointing out. Uh, it might have been McDermott who said it, but they were talking about the quarterback competition, and essentially the Bills made it seem like it's an open competition. Mm-hmm. Um, Even and, Nathan Peterman can win it? <laughs> yeah, open competition means open. Five-pick Peterman? Five-PP? Uh, you know, but the way they phrased it mm-hmm. was perfect, essentially saying that there are 52 guys in that locker room, and if they... Essentially saying that if they pick their leader, if they are following somebody, Mm -hmm. we're rolling with that guy. Yeah. To me, that says, congratulations, Josh Allen, you're the starting quarterback of the Buffalo Bills. Well, and also it plays into 
what, and I can't remember the player's name. Bills fans helped me out, but their team captain said, ah, he's going to have to answer for those tweets. Yeah. He's going to have to answer. So if he answers for them and the team likes it, maybe then they become like, all right, you're one of us. And that kind of helps. I'm sure he, yeah, he'll say the right things. To end this, though, we're going to play a little game. I'm going to pull up another name. These are other quarterbacks drafted. Not this year. Okay. You tell me if at all in their career will they start for the team they were drafted by. Mason Rudolph and the Steelers. Yes. How many years? Um, Well, I actually think he can be good. So I think there's a chance that he might have a long career. He sits two years, plays the third. I think Big Ben's only around for two more years. You don't think that they're going to resign him? Them? No, I think that Mason Rudolph's the guy moving forward. The, you you draft Mason no, Rudolph, I mean you that, draft his main you guy. You said, okay, so you think that they will resign him post this contract. Yeah, for and one he more year, be... he'll he'll sign a one year contract, then be done. It'll be his fi- so this year, farewell year next year, then Mason Rudolph. All right. How about Kyle Luletta, New York Giants? Probably not. You don't think he'll be the incumbent starter for the Giants? No, I think that the Giants are one of those teams where Eli will last maybe two or three more years, um, and they'll either have to do something to trade up to get a quarterback, maybe luck out and just get a quarterback, or go free agent. I really don't think Luletta's going to I'm going to go guy. yes. I'm going to say Eli plays three years, Luletta then takes over in that fourth year. And then the last one I want to bring up, because he's the only one – that is behind a quarterback that could be on the way out, Danny Etling, New England Patriots. I'm going to say hard no. Yeah, I would say no (laughs) as well. I didn't like Danny Etling at LSU or at Purdue. I don't know why the Patriots drafted him. I don't know why. For funsies. Last two things I want to ask you personally to get Mm -hmm. your little little take on these. All right. First, I know the Outcast talked about it, but you're also a Bears fan. Yep, sure. Roquan Smith pick, what do you think? Yeah. For your Chicago Bears. Now, I... The, when I sat there, I was like, Minka Fitzpatrick's on the board. <laughs> and people know I love Fitzpatrick on the show. Um, it was not the thing that the Bears probably should have done. I just really like Fitzpatrick. Uh, and part of that might be also be I really wanted Jamal Adams mm-hmm. as well last year. I'm thrilled about Trubisky. I got his jersey and all that. Uh, to me, Roquan Smith was the absolute right pick, even if I would have loved to have Tremaine Edmonds or something like that. He was the absolute right pick. Because of him and Trevathan, like that is mm-hmm. that is a monster are you inside. Put, are you putting Roquan inside outside? Because inside. I know because I know what the outcast one thing in their mm-hmm. comment section is. Brad said outside, and people started bashing him. No, I don't want him on the outside. To me, Roquan Smith, even though Trevathan's our leader right now, Roquan Smith is going to be the mm-hmm. leader of this football team for like a decade on the defensive side of the ball. He is so Brian, Brian Urlacher. Yeah. He is not Lance Briggs. He is Which, Brian Urlacher. To be honest, did you hear the one player people are comparing to Brian Urlacher in a way? No. Leighton Vanderash. Mm, kind of like I'll that like middle linebacker. Nobody's got tape on him, but he apparently is like a Brian Urlacher. Draft yeah. him, put him in the middle I like of that Rush. defense. La- last uh, question I wanted to ask you about the first round because I didn't get to ask you about mm-hmm. it. What did you think of the 49er pick to go at McGlinchey? I personally, well, I, like I personally questioned it so high. I didn't think McGlinchey was well, the top ten. Yeah, McGlinchey. I mean, I I like him. I do. Is it? A, I I think without a doubt he's the the number one tackle mm-hmm. in the draft. I mean, I, you over know Colt my rule. Miller. You don't like yes. Colt Miller. Yes, over Colt Miller for sure. Because uh, Colt my rule. Miller was my number one. Yeah, you know my tackle. rule though when it comes to offensive linemen. Yes. if they came from Notre Dame, draft you draft them. them. What if they're a guard? You draft him. It's an <laughs> offensive lineman. Uh, okay, I didn't know we were just staying to tackles here. No, no, no. I, I Any offensive lineman, if they're from Notre Dame, you draft him. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing with that. Mm-hmm. I think that, sure, maybe it was a little high. But when it comes down to it, to quote the great movie Draft Day, uh, I, great. Uh, but, did he go to the birthday party? <laughs> did he go? To, did any of his friends or his teammates go to his birthday party? And did he talk about the twenty dollars? But <laughs> the important thing is, it doesn't really matter where you took the mm-hmm. guy. If he's good, that's all that matters. And True. I think that he will be good. Will he be like? Is he going to change the game? Is he going to be a you know a perennial Pro Bowler? Probably not. Yeah, but, but he's going to be. He's going to protect uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. Or and that's that Jimmy, what matters. Jimmy Garoppolo. Is who you got to keep protected. that undefeated record. Yeah, you do. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think down below about the quarterbacks. Which ones should start? Will start? Who's starting day one, week one for their teams out of the quarterbacks? This has also been the longest segment. This is probably going on about. 
40 some minutes. We were talking quarterbacks. This well, is we the really longest to talk about Sam Bradford for a long the time. The podcast. I want to thank you guys for sticking through, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on iTunes, whether you're on podcast services around the world. Housekeeping here at the end. If you like what you're, what we're doing, want to join a podcast, be on a podcast, get a Patreon exclusive podcast. Go check out patreon.com backslash most valid podcast. You can go ahead and get our MVP t shirt. That store link is down below in the description. MVP most valuable podcast.com. I keep wanting to say MVP.com and that's not it. Yep, most valuable podcast.com. That's where you can get MVP each and every day. And last but not least, if you are on Apple I- Apple Podcast, you are on iTunes. Go give the Onside Kick a five star rating. Want to thank you guys for watching on YouTube. Want to thank you guys for listening on podcast services around the world. And as always, have a good day, everybody. <laughs>